Hi, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm Ann Dickerson. As many of you know, we have been seeing more cases of COVID-19, especially because of the Delta variant in not only New York City, but across the nation. Vaccination is considered to be the best way of tackling this virus. But we also understand that many of you do have concerns about vaccination. And so we took the top five questions submitted by you and your colleagues and wanted to address them here today. The concerns that we're hearing are about one, the Delta variant, two, um, the fact that the vaccine was created very quickly, three, fertility, four, that if you had COVID, do you need to take the vaccine? And five, do we need boosters? So I'd like to introduce you to your colleagues who have joined us here to answer some of these five concern questions about these five concerns. We have Bernard Kamins, Gopi Patel, and Jamila Sijo. So Bernard, why should people be concerned about the Delta variant? Um, I think it is one of the variants of concern for us is because it has mutated enough that it is causing more infections among people. So people are more infectious because they produce more of the virus. So uh, an interaction with the previous variants may lead to no infection, but with the Delta variant, people are more likely to get infected. There's also data to show that younger people are being infected more easily with the Delta variant where they are actually sick, sicker and need hospitalization. So should we stop everything because of the Delta variant? Um, no, I think that, you know, the, the important thing is that we are vaccinating people as many as we can, and that vaccines are really the best way to get out of this pandemic. Um, if we looked into the future, COVID-19 will not go away and we will continue to see cases. And the only way really to protect yourself is to get vaccinated. I think it's important um, to talk about the fact that the vaccines really are here to keep people out of the hospital, out of ICUs and prevent death from COVID. Um, and as you see these transmissions from the Delta variant, which is much more contagious than any of the variants we've seen, it's primarily being transmitted between unvaccinated individuals, and those individuals are getting really sick. We are seeing hospitalizations of younger individuals who elected not to get vaccinated, and in the few people that are hospitalized who are vaccinated, they're individuals who are immunocompromised. So we sort of already knew that the vaccines may not work as well in those individuals, so it was really important for the people around them to get vaccinated. Thank you. Sorry. So Bernard, what do you say to folks who are concerned the vaccine was created too quickly? Um, I'm not even sure if that vaccine was actually created too quickly. It was, it took the same amount of time to create the vaccine as you would the flu vaccine. But I think it, it is the testing process that was short, right? So we were able to show that the vaccine worked after two months, but there is a huge reason for that. It's because we had COVID all over the US and even all over the world. So if you're giving one side of the trial uh, saline, right, normal saline, and the other side COVID-19 vaccine, then you would actually show at a very short period that the vaccine works. Meaning in the case of Pfizer and Moderna, they were 95% effective. In the case of Johnson & Johnson, it was around 70% efficacy, right? So. So the, the only difference between this vaccines and the others is that the time uh, of people to develop the infection, which is what you're protecting the person against. So any drug that you're doing, you actually want to see the outcome, right? And in this case, it just took a lot of time, right? Uh, um, a lot, uh, it just took a shorter period of time because of the number of people getting infected. I think, Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I think these are the most scrutinized vaccines that we have. So everyone is watching them very closely um, and they waited the appropriate amount of time to look for side effects. Most serious side effects happen within uh, four to six weeks of receiving a vaccine and they waited a minimum of two months and they're actually waiting even longer for our younger uh, population to be offered vaccinations. 
So instead of waiting two months, they're waiting four to six months. And as Bernard said, we had a lot of COVID. It didn't take long for people to have events in the group that were not vaccinated to get symptomatic infections um, or even be hospitalized. But we weren't really seeing that even with Johnson & Johnson, people were vaccinated, weren't getting hospitalized, they weren't in ICUs and they weren't dying from COVID-19. And it didn't take long to see. Right, and then also like when I think about it, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, right? So all hands were on deck mm -hmm. to find the solution, to find the answers. So it wasn't the typical, it's in a queue and we're waiting until we get to it. Everybody was focused on making this happen. So it's not so much that it, the process was rushed, but we dedicated all of our resources into making this happen within a reasonable amount of time. And I've also heard that folks are concerned that it's just F FDA authorized, not um, or emergency use, and not fully approved. Um, should should they be concerned, or do we expect that that approval pretty quickly? Um, not I, well. I can tell you that other vaccines that have been approved in the past have been tested on people a lot less than than what's you know who that have been exposed to the COVID-19 vaccine if you think about it um what 200 million people now in this country alone close to it that have gotten the vaccine and in one year we only give out 100 million flu vaccines each year so I mean, it's double the number of vaccines that have been given out for COVID versus flu. And so I, I think the FDA, is, it is the federal government. They do have these um, milestones they have to meet. And the usual thing is when a company submits uh, data for approval of whatever drug vaccine they have, the FDA always waits six months, right? Doesn't matter what it is. They always wait for six months to get full licensure or full approval. In this situation, they could do it earlier because again, more people have gotten this vaccine than any other vaccine in the world. You can even combine the top five vaccines that we get and more people have gotten this vaccine than, 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 you know, that, that, uh, than other vaccines. So Gopi, should people who are getting the vaccine be concerned about fertility? I think I can understand why individuals who are thinking of starting a family, even if not in the near future, may have concerns. We do ask that you have these conversations with your healthcare providers, um, but currently there is data that suggests that there is no impact in sperm count or motility um, or the ability of a person to get pregnant um, or that embryo to implant and then to have a healthy pregnancy. In fact, there's really great data that suggests the antibodies you have from the vaccine can be passed to your newborn baby and they definitely can't get vaccinated right now. Um, so currently there's no evidence to suggest that there's an effect on fertility, but we do ask that you speak to your providers. Um, there's great information on the CDC website as well as our website um, from experts talking about the concerns of fertility. And if I may add that, you know, so the mRNA vaccine has the genetic material just for the spike protein of the SARS-CoV-2 virus, right? So if you got infected, the same mRNA would be in your body from a natural infection, plus all the rest of the genetic material from SARS-CoV-2. So really, and, and then the other ingredients that's in our vaccine are, are ingredients that you can actually find from food that we eat, right? So um, so just because they are considered medicines, it doesn't certainly mean that they're, they're, there is something hidden in there that we don't know about. So so again, I, I just want to say that the same genetic material in, um, in our vaccines will be found in a natural infection. If you get infected with COVID, with whatever variant it is, they will have a lot more of their genetic material in um, in the, in, in your body. So thank you. And I should actually, I should attest my, um, my sister got the vaccine while pregnant and my two months old old niece actually has COVID antibodies. So it, I know she discussed getting the vaccine with her provider, her provider advised her to do so. And you know, now my niece is protected, which is great. That's great. I think one more thing that's really important is that pregnant women 
there's evidence that they have poor outcomes when infected with COVID-19. So again, this is one of the best ways to protect yourself and your unborn child from COVID-19. So Jamila, should people that got COVID also get the vaccine? Yes, definitely. I actually had COVID and I got quite ill for about 10 days. It was, I wasn't in the hospital, but I had every symptom in the book. I was so short of breath that at first I didn't even realize I was short of breath because I don't know what it felt like, right? Like as a nurse, you ask patients, are you short of breath? And they tell you they're short of breath. But then it happened to me and I'm like, oh my God, this feels horrible. So right after I did get my antibodies tested and I had titers, but then over time, the numbers did not hold. So I decided to get vaccinated. And in all sincerity, me choosing to get vaccinated for me was very personal because I just did not want to feel that way again. It was really, really horrible. And I also don't want my loved ones to feel that way. I do have little kids at home. I want to keep them protected, make sure my friends and family are protected, make sure I'm protecting my colleagues. So please, I encourage you, if you did get the COVID infection, please still consider getting vaccinated so we can all keep fighting this virus together. Thank you. I'm so glad you're okay. Thank you. And Gopi, did you have anything you want to add? Um, it's really hard to follow that. And um, I'm sorry that you were sick, but I'm proud of you for electing to get vaccinated to protect yourself and your family and your colleagues. I was part of the clinical trial and learned through an antibody test that I actually had asymptomatic COVID, but elected to continue to be part of that trial for the, some of the same reasons. I have a family to protect, including a seven-year-old who can't get vaccinated, um, but also saw a lot of pain and suffering in the hospital and would never want that in my family or my colleagues or or anything else. The antibodies that we saw from COVID a year ago um, may not be as robust as the antibodies we see from vaccination, especially with some of the variants that are circulating today. So we do encourage individuals who've had COVID to consider getting vaccinated to protect themselves and their loved ones. Thank you all. So Gopi, should we be talking about boosters yet? That's a really great question. I know a lot of people are interested in, in whether or not um, based on their antibody test, they require a booster or based on the timing of their vaccine or their underlying medical condition, they require a booster. Um, I think people are looking at this very closely and right now, none of the vaccines are authorized to give an additional dose, um, even in the setting of lots of circulating COVID-19, especially the Delta variant. Um, and they all show activity against the Delta variant. And I caution people to look at media as their primary source of information. Um, there probably will be a need for boosters at some point, but I think the focus really should be on getting those who are not vaccinated, vaccinated, because you could boost as much as you would like, but if you're not solving the issue, if other people are not getting vaccinated, so if I was immunocompromised and my vaccine response isn't as great as someone who is not immunocompromised, unless everybody around me is vaccinated, I'm still at risk. Um, so at this point, we're not recommending boosters, but we're watching the science very closely and then the recommendations from our public health authorities. So final question, starting with Jamila. What would you say to those who just want to wait and see? The longer you wait, the higher the risk of actually contracting COVID and getting sick. And I know that sometimes we think, well, if I get sick, my, my illness will be mild. But you really don't know that. There are a lot of people that are young, that were young, healthy, that got really sick and even lost their lives. So that would encourage you not to wait any moment longer to so please go ahead and get vaccinated to protect you and to continue to protect your loved ones. I couldn't have said it any better, but I do think it's important to get the information that you need to make the best decision for you and to go to reputable sources and talk to your providers about what's best for you. Um, we are seeing an increase in COVID-19 and it is affecting younger individuals and that's everyone's future, including some of you out there. And so please look at reputable sources and ask the questions that you need um, from your providers. 
Uh, we have information at our website and you can always get a hold of any of us in infection prevention or infectious diseases and we're happy to answer any questions that you have. Yeah, um, even though COVID is a worldwide problem, we can even just look at our own country, right? More than 34 million people have now gotten COVID. Out of those 34 million, more than 607,000 of our loved ones are brothers, sisters, mothers, fathers, grandparents who have died, or even children, right? Our own sons and daughters have died from COVID. And so it's, it's really important that we do end this uh, pandemic through vaccination. The other thing that I want to say is that they, we've already given out just in this country alone, 339 million doses of the COVID-19 vaccine. So I, I don't know what else um, uh, the uh, people who are hesitant are waiting for is that we have gotten, we have given out that many vaccine. And the last part is for New York City alone, right? Recently, the New York City Department of Health and Medical Hygiene released some data that since January of 2021, the vast majority of people who have died, so almost 99% of people who have died from COVID have been unvaccinated. And the same number, about 98% of those who were hospitalized have been unvaccinated. So as most of the doctors who've been saying is that it is now a pandemic of the unvaccinated. And unfortunately, um, for parents with young kids who want to vaccinate their kids, they can't right now, right? Anyone younger than 12 can't get the vaccine. So part of it is that it's also in our best interest to also protect the kids. Because So by getting vaccinated, you're less likely to be infected. You're less likely than to infect kids who can't access the vaccine yet. So So I'd first like to thank our guests here, Jamila, Gobi, and Bernard, so much for your expertise um, and for answering these concerns. We do hope that we've addressed your concerns, but if you do have any additional questions, you can email covidquestions at mountsinai.org and we'll be happy to answer them. We also, if we've you know, given you the answers you are looking for um, or ad address any concerns you have, we do really hope that you schedule your vaccine appointment online through mountsinai.org by via online scheduling, or you can call and schedule an appointment. Thank you all so much for joining us today.